स्टार्ट मैडम हेलो स्टार्ट a very warm welcome to one and all to this facebook live session on prospects for acquiring qualification in public administration peace studies disaster management uh, these are some of the programs uh, which are on offer at uh, indira gandhi national open university on behalf of all at ignu regional center kochi myself dr prasita unnikrishnan assistant director warmly welcome all of you to this live session uh, which in a way is being held as a part of the promotional initiatives uh, which are being undertaken for the january 2022 admission <laughs> session prospects for acquiring qualification in public administration in studies disaster management so through this facebook live session i would be covering the following programs that is the certificate in disaster management post graduate diploma in disaster management master of arts public administration and master of arts gandhi and peace studies so these are the four programs which i intend to cover through this uh, session before i start with the programs and uh, speak more about the programs the eligibility criteria and the fee structure and the course structure let me just share with you a brief introduction about indira gandhi national open university uh, igno was established way back in the year 1985 by the central act of a parliament and is continuously striven to build an inclusive society through inclusive education as per the recent initiatives by mhrd government of india igno has tried to increase the cross enrollment ratio by offering high quality uh, teaching through open and distance learning mode apart from that igno is also offering various programs through the online mode as well in fact the university began by offering two academic programs in the year 1987 that is diploma in management and diploma in distance education and today it serves the educational aspirations of over 3 million students in india through 21 school of studies and a network of 56 regional centers across india over the years it can be said that igno has lived up to the country's expectation of providing education to the marginalized sections of society that is a free of cost education is being provided to all jail inmates across the country and a large number of scst learners are also or admitted to the various programs of the universities under the fee exemption of which is being provided by igno hence igno uh, in fact was established to take education to the doorstep of the learners now how learning takes place through igno basically it is uh, through flexible admission rules as i said earlier we have student support services across the country uh, in kerala itself we have three regional centers that is the regional center kochi which i am representing regional center vadagara and regional center trivandrum the igno programs have a flexibility as far as the pace and duration of the study a person who is studying anywhere in india can enroll for any any of the programs uh, being offered by igno not only in india and even abroad as well our study materials are digitized uh, we have our digitized copy of study and materials which is available uh, on the e gyan kosh link of uh, uh, www.igno.ac.in so how one can apply to the igno programs 
basically one can apply to the igno programs as i uh, told earlier as well the january 2020 admission cycle is ongoing for which the last date is 25th of march 2022 so for applying to igno programs one can visit online you can just refer the link https igno admission.samarth.edu.in or you can visit the main igno website that is www dot igno dot ac dot in and go to the register online and click on the fresh admission kindly go through the guidelines which are given and then apply for the program of your choice i'm just sharing with you the screenshot uh, of how you can apply to the programs available at igno as you can see uh, this is the screenshot once you click on register online this is a screenshot which uh, opens in the home page itself there is a, a something called program information of the ignosamarth.edu.in once you click on the program information uh, you get a list of all the available programs of which are on offer at igno and uh, any program which is of interest to you not only the four programs which i have mentioned before but any other programs which are of interest to you can be you can have a detailed information about the program including the course structure the duration and the fees of the program flexibility is the key of being an igno learner Hence, every program of IGNO has a minimum duration and maximum duration. Our IGNO learners are study are a very heterogeneous group, I must say, and uh, uh, they may be housewives, they may be uh, young learners, they may even be senior citizens, or they may someone uh, they may be also professional who is pursuing this program along with his or her job responsibilities. Hence, uh, due to this heterogeneity, only uh, IGNO provides the flexibility to every learner to complete their program within the maximum duration of, of the study. Like for a certificate program, the minimum duration is six months. That is the minimum duration which is a, uh, for a certificate program. However, you have the flexibility to complete your program in a maximum duration of two years. Similarly, for a diploma or a postgraduate diploma program, the minimum duration is one year and you have the flexibility to complete your program within a maximum duration of three years. Uh, similarly, for a bachelor's degree program, the minimum duration is three years and the maximum uh, duration uh, in which you can complete your undergraduate degree program is six years. And for a master's degree program, the minimum duration is two years and the maximum duration in which you can complete your program is four years. So this is the flexibility uh, which IGNO provides as far well as the duration of completion of your program is concerned. The IGNO programs which are activated under Regional Center Cochin is available under the brochure which is available on the RC Cochin website. Uh, you can just give RC Cochin in the Google and uh, the IGNO RC Cochin website opens wherein the brochure is available. As I said to you earlier, there are 33 LSCs under RC Cochin out of which 90 programs are presently activated and some of the prominent programs uh, uh, which are of interest to the students are like B, uh, BA General Program, BA Honors Program, BCom Program, BSc Program, BCA Program, MEPC Program, uh, MBA program, MSW program, these are some of the programs which are of great interest to our learners. So this is the list of the programs which are uh, presently activated under regional center coaching. That, that is, you have various master's level program, you have various bachelor's level program, you have various PG diploma programs, you have various diploma program, certificate program, and PG certificate programs. So today, as I said to you before, I would be covering uh, the four programs out of which one of the program is certificate in disaster management. That is the CDM program. As you all know, in the current uh, um, uh, 
present scenario, in fact, disaster management is, has gained a lot of importance, uh, especially in Kerala, if you can see after the floods, uh, which we had in 2017 and 18 as well, uh, the Kerala floods gave uh, gave a great impetus uh, to disaster preparedness and that itself uh, uh, saw uh, an increase in enrollment for the certificate in disaster management program as this is of general interest to the learners who want to work in the field of uh, disaster mitigation and preparedness. So the main objectives and scope of the program is the certificate in disaster management program in fact, aims at providing knowledge to the learners in the areas of disaster preparedness, prevention, mitigation, relief, reconstruction, and rehabilitation. The program will be of uh, uh, use to NGO functionaries and volunteers, uh, military, paramilitary, police, home guards, civil defense personnel, professionals such as geologists, scientists, meteorologists, engineers, foresters, fire service personnel, administrators, government and public sector undertakings, official rural development functionaries, urban government officials, primary health functionaries, etc. So in general, these are some of the functionaries which uh, for which uh, this program has specifically been designed. However, even for a layman also who wants to know more about disaster management, this program would be of great use. As far as the eligibility criteria of this program is concerned, the basic eligibility criteria is 10 plus 2 or its equivalent, and the medium of instruction is English and Hindi. The, as far as the fee structure of this program goes, it is uh, 2600 for the full program, and the minimum duration is six months, and maximum duration in which you can complete the CDM program is two years. So this program is uh, available in both English as well as Hindi medium. As far as the course uh, structure of this program is concerned, it is a 16 credit program. In IGNO, as, uh, as uh, you all must be knowing as well, IGNO follows the credit system wherein one credit equal to 30 hours of study. So this program is basically a 16 credit program in which you have to pass uh, the two courses, that is the CDM1 and CDM2. CDM1 focuses on foundation course in disaster management, which is an eight credit course, and the CDM CDM2 is disaster management methods and techniques, which is again of eight credits. So total 16 credits is what you have to appear for these two subjects if you want to get the CDM degree. So basically, this program is of interest for those who are, have a basic interest in disaster preparedness and management. Next, I come to the second uh, program that is the postgraduate diploma in disaster management. This is a one year program, basically uh, a bit higher than the CDM program, which I just discussed. So the postgraduate diploma in disaster management uh, and the basic objectives of this program is to provide comprehensive knowledge to the learners on disaster preparedness, mitigation and rehabilitation. Uh, it also enables the learners to carry out risk assessment and vulnerability analysis. Uh, it also generates community awareness and strengthens in the institutional mechanism for community mobilization and participation in disaster management. Uh, in fact, a learner who enrolls for this program also improves upon his communication skills for disaster preparedness. Uh, the learner also gets a greater awareness about how uh, about the effective disaster response in various emergency situations this program also equips the learners with tools for meeting emergency medical requirements the covid crisis has seen many such emergency medical requirements and in fact this program also enables to deal with such emergency medical requirements and incorporate gender sensitive disaster management approach and in fact also enables the learners to inculcate new skills and sharpen their existing skills of government officials, 
voluntary activists, activists, development professionals, and elected representatives for effective disaster management. So let's see some of the career opportunities uh, which uh, a learner can have after doing this program, like that is a postgraduate diploma in disaster management program. This program, uh, the career opportunities are basically as a government functionary, NGO functionary and volunteer. You can also work in military, paramilitary, police, home guards and civil as a civil defense personnel. Uh, for a geologist, scientist, meteorologist, engineers, administrators, and other government and public sector undertakings or officials as well, this program would be of great help. And even for the rural development functionaries, uh, for the persons who are working in PHCs, that is the primary health center functionaries, the relief workers, social workers, uh, environment related issues, for them, uh, career opportunities are available in such fields of social work, environment, uh, hospital management, primary health centers. So in all these fields, you have career opportunity. Is uh, once you do this postgraduate diploma in disaster management, and as this would be an added add-on qualification while you are working as a social worker or a PHC worker, or even as a meteorologist, engineer, or administrator in a government sector or a public sector undertaking. So let's, uh, let's just uh, see the eligibility criteria, medium, duration, and fees of this program. The basic eligibility criteria is graduation in any program and that is a graduation in any discipline. The medium of instruction is English as well as Hindi, and the fee is rupees 6,300 for the full program. And the minimum duration of this program is one year, while in maximum duration, you will get is three years. That is, you can complete this program in a minimum duration of one year uh, or a maximum duration of three years. Next, we come to the Master of Arts in Public Administration. Uh, in fact, uh, those who would write, uh, those who are working in public administration and field, uh, for them, this Master of Arts in Public Administration would be of great interest. Especially, we have seen that uh, students who prepare for the uh, IAS entrance examinations as well try and pursue this program as public administration is one of the papers in that. Uh, so this program is basically aimed to provide a comprehensive knowledge to the learners on the nature of public administration in, in India in the globalization context with a focus on the role of state, public sector and public-private interface. The program would also be able to develop the conceptual faculties uh, of the learners on various administrative theories, postulates, models, processes, methods, instruments and uh, technology as well so this program is basically uh, of interest for those uh, who uh, who want to uh, work in the public uh, administration field and who want to know about the various administrative procedures uh, theories postulates models processes and also uh, want to know what general administration is uh, public administration in india is in uh, general and the role of the state and public sector and public private interface uh, the learner would also be able to understand by doing this program as far as the eligibility criteria medium of instruction and duration and fees of the uh, ma in public administration program is concerned the basic eligibility criteria is bachelor's degree or a higher degree the medium of instruction is english or a hindi and the fee is rupees 13600 for the full program and the duration is minimum two years so maximum duration for this program is four years so you, the learner has the flexibility to complete this program within a maximum duration of four years as well 
as far as the program structure of the mpa program is concerned mpa is basically a 64 credit program which consists of compulsory and optional courses uh, the first year if you see uh, the screenshot uh, you have to cover basically four subjects i must say four subjects that is mpa 011 mpa 012 and mpa 013 and mpa 014 MP01 is basically the state, society, and public administration, which is an eight credit program. MP012 is administrative theory, which is an eight credits. MP013 is public systems management, which is of eight credits. MP014 is human resource management, which is again a compulsory paper and of eight credits. So in basically in the first year, you have to attempt these four papers, that is MP11, 12, 13, and 14, which are each pro subject is of eight credits. Next, uh, uh, we come to the programs uh, which uh, as a MPA student, you would have to cover in the second year. That is, you have to cover MPA 15, 16, 17, 18. Apart from that, you also have to cover uh, MSO, uh, MSO 2, MS and MPS 3 and MPAP 2, which is the project work. So there is a project work also in the MA public administration program. Uh, mostly all these are of eight credits, except for the disaster management, that is MPA 018, which is of four credits, and the MPA 017, which is of, that is the electronic governance, which is of four credit. So this is how uh, basically you can complete your Masters in Public Administration program by clearing all the papers of first year and second year and including the project work that is the MPAP 002. Here I would like to mention that every IGNO program which has a project work component, the student is advised to refer the project guide, especially the project guide of the program acts as a manual uh, which will enable the student to complete his or her project successfully. Apart from that, I would also like to inform all students who are listening that every program of IGNO has a program guide. So whenever a student takes a admission to any of the IGNO programs, he or she is advised to first refer the program guide of the program as this would enable the student to understand what the nitty gritties of the program, the course structure, and what are the basic requirements which the student had to undergo to complete this program. So the base of any program is the program guide. So the student is advised whenever he or she enrolls to any of the IGNO programs to refer the program guide firsthand to enable him or her to successfully complete the program. The next program, which I would be also covering, is the Master of Arts, Gandhi and Peace Studies. That is the NGPS program. Uh, the Gandhi and uh, Peace Studies program is also a very good program, which is of interest to many of the learners who want to study about the Gandhian philosophy and thoughts. In fact, the basic uh, objectives of this program and the scope of the program is to promote both theoretical and applied research in Gandhian studies, peace, conflict management, and social regeneration. In fact, today, uh, uh, the, this is the age of globalization, and there is a need for alternative models of development. And across the world, Gandhian studies are being looked upon as an important contributors towards achieving these objectives. And it is also a specialized area for those learners who are interested in understanding evaluation and implementation of Gandhian model of development and conflict resolution. In fact, the course will also contain Gandhi's views and perception on economic, social, gender, political, environmental, and sustainable developmental issues. In fact, the course also contains critics and evaluation of Gandhian concepts, its relevance in the contemporary world, and contributions made by Gandhian scholars in the further development of Gandhian thoughts and uh, progress. The primary thrust, in fact, of this program 
is to expose the learners, particularly the younger, younger generation of today, to the thoughts and ideas of Gandhi and its place in the contemporary world. So basically, this program is for those who has who wants to understand Gandhiji's values, ethos, and wants to apply it in his or her daily practical uh, way, maybe in his professional field or in whichever field he or she is working. So what is the eligibility criteria of the Master of Gandhian and Peace Studies program is um, bachelor's degree or a higher degree in any discipline. The medium of instruction is basically English and Hindi and the fee is rupees 10,800 for the full program. And the duration of this program is minimum two years and maximum you can complete this program within the maximum duration of master's level program, which is four years. As far as the course content of this program is concerned, uh, this program is uh, basically in the first year, you have to cover the following um, eight subjects. That is the MGP 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 9, and 14. And each uh, subject is of four credits. That is the MGP 1 is the Gandhi, the man, and his times. MGP 2 deals with philosophy of Gandhi. MGP 3, Gandhi's thought, a social thought. MGP 4 is Gandhi's political thought. MGP, M, MGP E6 is Gandhi's economic thought. MGP 7 is non-violent movements after Gandhi. MGP 9 is Gandhi in the 21st century. And MGP 14 is Gandhi Econo Ecology and Sustainable Development. So basically, the first year consists of eight subjects which you have to clear on the set topics. Next, uh, you also have a compulsory component that is MGP 5, which is Introduction to Peace and Conflict uh, Resolution, that is of four credit. And apart from this, you have to choose 28 credits from any of the optional uh, subjects uh, which are given that is from MGP 8, 10, 11, 12, 13, 15, 16 and 17. So these uh, uh, you have to choose for any 28 optional papers are also there which the student has to cover. So totally this program is a 64 credit program which includes project work as well. That is MGP E17 is a project work which has to be undertaken by the student. Project work in this component is kept as optional and you can, in, in fact, if a student does not want to take a project work, he or she can take up to two four credit courses in the process. So that is the flexibility uh, which a student has got uh, by pursuing this MGPS program. So uh, now I come to the basically to the end of this session uh, today as uh, in this session I have discussed basically about in general about IGNO and its programs with a special focus on the four programs that is a certificate in disaster management, postgraduate diploma in disaster management, the masters in public administration and the masters in peace and Gandhian studies. So these are the four programs which I have discussed. I'm sure our IGNO learners would have got a basic idea about the course content, fee structure, as well as the eligibility criteria of this program. And I'm sure many of our IGNO learners would be also interested in joining to any of the programs of their interest uh, at IGNO. As I said earlier, the last date for admission is 25th of March 2022. And I would also like to highlight that SCST fee exemption is available for certain undergraduate programs of IGNO, undergraduate certificate diploma programs of IGNO. So if you want to get a detailed list of this uh, fee accepted programs, request you to kindly visit our RC Cochin website. That is IGNO RC Cochin website, Regional Center Cochin website. That is rccochin.igno.ac.in. Uh, and uh, in the website, we have uploaded the list of uh, exempted pro uh, fee exemption programs, which can be of benefit to our SCSD learners. 
uh, we also i would also like to share that we also have a facebook page through which this uh, live session is being transmitted we also have our twitter account of rc kuchin request all who are following us uh, uh, request uh, all who are watching this session to kindly follow us on Twitter. We also have our YouTube channel of RC Kuchin, wherein all of our sessions, whichever uh, the academics or other other resource persons are being are doing, are being uploaded uh, on the YouTube channel of RC Kuchin. Many of the counseling sessions which have been taken have also been uploaded in the YouTube channel of RC Kuchin. For any queries, in fact, if you have any queries pertaining to the programs which uh, has been discussed here or any of the general queries, queries as well, please feel free to write to us at rcquitchin at the rate igno.ac.in. Uh, the link for online admissions I have again shared that is https ignoadmission.samarth.edu.in. You can also get the link for online admissions on our igno website igno website that is www.igno.ac.in go to register online and click on fresh admissions so uh, this is uh, where you can apply to any of the programs of igno so as i said earlier the last date is 25th of march 2022 you can uh, join to any of our programs which are of interest to you through our ICNO website or you can also go to register online and click on fresh admissions. So uh, thank you all for listening to me patiently in this lesson. I hope the session, uh, the session has benefited you all in some ways and I am sure uh, all learners who are watching this session would definitely join any of the programs of ICNO which are of interest to them. Thank you once again. Thank you very much.